there's an edge of competition where you almost got to go into this darkness yeah to 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 to, to, to destroy the opposition mm -hmm. how do you balance that being a follower of jesus you know ben ben is an interesting dude he's like you know he's, he's he, he, he believes in what he believes in and and you know more power to him yeah but um but yeah he was cool and he he wanted it to be successful yeah and that was a part of what i respected like now did you ever see him and william lane craig together bruce lawn all right ladies and gentlemen i have a incredible guest with us who uh is not is not just a, a one trick pony this man is an author this man is an entrepreneur he's a thought leader he's willing to poke and push back and you know he's probably most known for taking my plan a my my first passion in life which is to become an nba player and he took it to a whole another level that i could never take it to probably because he's has amazing genetics. Uh, Jonathan Isaacs, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, my man? Bro, thank you so much for doing this, man. Thank you, man. We've been trying to do something together for a while. Yes. In person, and it's always getting schedules and all that kind of stuff. And um, I'm extremely excited to do this in person, and you have the the new clothing line coming mm -hmm. out um, That's that we're going to get an exclusive sneak peek of yep. something. But um, tell us about that, because I want to make sure we really hone in on your vision and your heart for that, and I want to kind of get into some of your story. Yeah, I appreciate you. I would say first off, for real, thank you for having me. Um, glad I got the workout and I was able to get out here and talk to you. Uh, when it comes to Unitas, Unitas is the name of this clothing company brand. Um, and even more than that, sneakers, we're gonna try to get into everything. But the heartbeat and the idea of it is, as today's society, our country, all these different things move farther, progressively farther away from godly principles and values, uh, constitutional principles and values, I felt the need to create something that I felt like people could buy with their values mm. and give people a confidence and encouragement that our values are valid. Mm -hmm. And if they won't celebrate them, then we can celebrate them ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. W what I appreciate about it is when I looked at the promo and, and everything you've been showing about it, that it's not this like there's visual vision behind it, right? Right, and sometimes when we get folks who are irritated by the stuff going on in the media and irritated by some of the alliances with the ESG scores and the big brands, mm. a lot of times it's just like we just anti woke. This is gonna be anti woke, and I'm like, yo, that's not gonna get anything right. moving. I there agree. has to be vision behind it. And so when I looked at this promo, which we'll look at here in a second, I'm like, there's vision. There's vision. Sometimes we're just reactionary. Absolutely. And I, I love that you said that because when this thing, when if, it's just been like in the work for like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So our time wasn't even as crazy as it is right now, mm -hmm. a year and a half ago. So when the idea started, I was actually talking to my pastor about it. Mm. And I had I was signed with Nike back in 2020. Mm -hmm. I got injured and they didn't re-sign me. Mm. And he said, you should look into making your own sneaker and wear that this upcoming season. And I'm like, <laughs> that's not an easy feat. Like, yeah. That's a hard thing to yeah. do. Yeah. And uh, he told me to do it. So I just started looking into it. And then it turned into, why just do this for me? Mm. Why not have a vision to bring people together? And again, I want to instill that that confidence and boldness that our values are valid and mm -hmm. we can stand on them. Mm -hmm. Not in necessarily opposition or anti-woke or anything like that. People like to throw that around and yeah. it sticks. Yep. Um, but it's just about agreeing to disagree yeah i respect you and your your opinion and values yeah. we live in a great country yeah. you know you got to respect mine too yeah. and i think being trying to do it in a way that's culturally relevant and fashion forward and it's not cheesy and it's a real logo and it's you know it's, it's a remnant of the arc of the government mm -hmm. covenant that we tried to recreate so i just think that we kind of hit it from all cylinders it wasn't just about okay let's just throw something out there that yeah. goes against what everybody's doing but something that people can actually really grab a hold of, right. kids, adults, and yeah. hopefully we can get this thing to where it's a full scale, Nike, Adidas type, yeah, company. Yeah, well, I, I, uh, that's one of your pieces right there. Mm -hmm. True greatness. Um, I, lo I love the aesthetic of it, the branding of it, like the, even the logo. Like you guys didn't cut any corners mm -hmm. on it, right? Because sometimes the anti woke stuff is just low hanging fruit, right? Is it we Cheesy. just we just gonna be you know <laughs> we right, gonna be against it? Anti woke. Anti -woke. <laughs> that, that, hey, that'll probably go. <laughs> right, <it> would. <laughs> that'll probably go. But 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 to have the thought of like let's make it excellent, mm -hmm. let's make it good, and like kudos to you for having your pastor involved in stuff yeah. and like 
like listening and being like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't, you know? Yeah, he's he's dope. He's dope. I've 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 become accustomed to, you know, relying on him and mm -hmm. taking him things and, you know, this is what's going on in yeah. my life. This was this and allowing him to mentor me and he really is more like a like spiritual father. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um <laughs> so you said Nike dropped you when you got injured. Mm -hmm. And what what was the injury? I tore my ACL. You tore your ACL. So it was it was extensive. I I tore it in the bubble. I d how did I miss all this? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember the bubble. I remember that moment where where and we'll come back to that where you stood when yeah. everyone else kneeled. I remember that. Um, I don't remember you tearing your ACL. Yeah, the next game. Wow. I've torn my I tore my ACL in 2005. Okay, bet. And, so you're, uh, you're familiar. I ACL MCL meniscus. Kept playing like a guy got got it fixed. Mm. Kept playing. And then 2019 had another meniscus tear, mm. and in 2022, last April had another meniscus really? tear, and September had it cleaned up again. So I've I've had three knee surgeries, and the doctor was like, "Look, you're gonna need a full knee re 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 uh, reconstruction surgery." Yeah. So anyway, I just I just hoop with my son. I about now. to say you got to hoop in the yard. Yeah. So at least you're still getting around. I just hoop with my son. I'm not trying to because bro, I, you know I got an addictive personality. So like. I really thought I was going to go to the NBA because I grew up when they told you you could do anything. <laughs> they was like, you could do anything. Like, I, I could do anything? Like, wait a minute. And then, like, and then like my, my mom's boyfriend sat me down and, and like, explained genetics to me. Wow. And was like... <laughs> you need to figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> like, listen, like, Armenians, we're not built for... Wow. Okay, you're Armenian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're not built for... Like, we're built for, you know... You'd probably be the first. first there, there's never the, been one. No yeah, one never, He's like, we're built for strenuous stuff, like playing chess, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that's the sport <laughs> or, or table tennis, right? And then, you know, if you factor in the Kardashians, like, we've we've taken more NBA players than we've added to the... Jesus. to the. <laughs> so... That was a hard conversation to have, and, but I kept playing. So I, I would play three, four, five times a week and and not taking care of my body. And so right. I just kind of, right. you know, arthritis on the knees and the whole bit. So I'm chilling. I'm done. I'm retired. I'm retired. But I like watching. How old's your son? My son's eight. Okay. So right. he's getting nice. Like we, we, I play with him every day. We go out there. We do drills. We do the whole thing. And he's, yeah. he's, he's nice. Yeah. Um, he's, and you, he, he's you, nice. Inf you infuse some of those genetics in there too. Yeah. I yeah, hopefully he takes more of my wife's yeah. genetics. You know, <laughs> my wife is black, so I'm hoping yeah. that 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 he'll sprout out. My sister in law is, is fairly tall, and my nice. my father in law is very tall, nice. so like over six foot. You know, so I'm hoping that you know he'll get that. But even even still, like there's levels to it. Right. You know, like For there's sure. levels to it. So so when you tour. Uh, your ACL. What was that recovery process like? Strenuous. Uh, never had did something like that before, and uh, uh, it was just tough given the circumstances, especially. And so getting out of that, the right after it, getting out of that rut of like, yo, what the heck, mm -hmm. um, and getting back on the plow, uh, reevaluating where I am with Christ and mm -hmm. all that stuff, and then just getting back to work. Yeah, and then it took a year. Uh, more than a year, a year and a half, missed two seasons mm. um, and had my first time back for the last little part of this last season. But as of now, I'm fully ready to go for yeah. this season. Well, you did well this past season, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I looked up and you were averaging double double digits, right? Well, I, had, uh, uh, I hadn't played the whole season and just came back for 11 games. So uh -huh. That's probably what you saw. Yeah. But they were good. Yeah, and so uh, I think it was it was, was it eleven points a game, something like that. Probably, I think it was eleven points a game in eleven minutes a game. Something like that. I'm like, this man <laughs> scored a, a point for every minute he was in the game. That's that's so, impressive. Something like that. So I'm I'm looking forward to this upcoming season to be healthy and, and and just picking up where I left off. Yeah, that's dope, man. Um, well, me and my son are going through the Last Dance series. Oh, bit nice. Yeah, and so we are diving in. And really, uh, I'm just trying to give him inspiration, right? Because yeah, yeah, he'll get that, into Pokemon. Get that and, mentality. Yeah. And yeah. so he was watching that. And so, I, uh, you know, watching that thing, um, Jordan was maniacal. He was. He was maniacal, man. He was. And he would, uh, there was a whole thing where the guy had a good game on him mm -hmm. and then came up to him after the game and said, good game. Good game, so Mike. I took that person. He, he took that person. <laughs> but then they come come to find out. He, so he comes back, he destroys the dude. The next game, he scores fifty on him. He made the whole thing up. Yeah, made the whole thing up. So my question for you is: There's an edge of competition where you almost got to go into this darkness. Yeah. To 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 to, to, to destroy the opposition. Mm -hmm. How do you balance that? Being a follower of Jesus, I think you balance it by 
recognizing and understanding that Jesus wasn't no punk. Oh, that's good. And figures in the Bible like David, figures in the Bible like Gideon, um, who were warriors. And when they were given a command by God to go in and take care of a job, they went in and took care of it. Mm. And so um, I think I think there is a there's a righteous indignation. There's a righteous I'm I'm here and I'm I'm here placed by God mm -hmm. and I want to get as big as I can and to do as well as I can mm -hmm. to platform the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so to do that, I got a hoop. Mm. And so there is that that edge. I think it's it's easy to get into, you know, where Jordan was and maybe yeah. where Kobe was mm -hmm. with the with that thinking, but it's always kind of, you you go that way, you lose something else. Mm. But I think when it's rooted in Christ, you don't lose um, because you can shake somebody's hand after the game, you mm. can show respect, you can show love, and still take care of what you need to. So you wouldn't say that having that paradigm is incongruent with- No, nah, it's not uh, at all. Yeah. Not at all. Because I watch it, I'm just kind of like, man, this is, he was really, he was maniacal. Yeah, no, I, no, I, I think them, you know, I, I think them, the, uh, because right, it's, it's on a personal level. They're yeah. taking it personally, but I think when you have, when you just have an understanding, like you're not out there being hateful. Yeah, you're not out there, yes. you know, cursing somebody yeah, out yeah, or yeah. trying to talk about somebody's mm -hmm. mom. But you know that you you want to win, right? And so to be able to do that, you got to be able to compete with these guys that are going to say things to you. I've had plenty of things said to me. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's not congruent at yeah. all yeah. with the structure of who yeah. Jesus Christ was. I mean, he put he he beat up Steve Kerr. Just, just, just like out of practice. <laughs> What's the verse? It says, "It says the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, yeah. and the violent take yeah. it by force." Yeah. So there is a, there is a violence that comes with. Yeah, that's good. Discipleship. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and and advancing the kingdom. Yeah. Did you watch that whole series? Yeah. yeah. What did you think about it? I loved it. I, I, it's respect, like, for him to be who he was and get a peek into his brain is wild. Like you know, reminds you a bit of. Kobe mm -hmm. and and my, mama, know, my, mama, my, mama, right, mentality. mama mentality yeah. and how they got to yeah but it's true I probably should watch this game before this upcoming season you should, but, uh, you should. Make sure, I gotta watch it and then I gotta go pray and study some words so I don't go yeah, into don't go too bit, dark right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think I think there is something uh, fascinating about like you said gleaming into that mentality and the ability to to, to focus at that level yeah. right because to, to your point it's it's the warrior it's it's everything it's it could be business it could be youtube it could be music but but it's the ability to to hone in on something on that level and that's why i think this that that's why they get performed so well it's not there's a you know obviously in the basketball community perform well but i think outside of the basketball like my mm -hmm. niece came and sat down and watched my 22 year old niece she ain't never Played basketball, never watched basketball, never watched Jordan, and sat down and was just like mesmerized. Right, by right. got up with what what I got to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be great. So yeah, do, do, would you say you're naturally a, a competitive person in the way we see that 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 thing in Michael, that thing in Kobe? Is that something natural in you? No. Okay. No, no, I'm definitely more of a kind of laid back dude. I'm a nice guy. Okay. But balancing, like I think the more that you learn about Christ, is you learn about the balance mm -hmm. of. Uh, being as wise as a serpent, harmless mm -hmm. as a dove, um, Jesus coming in there whipping them tax collectors. It's like that the heart of Christ calls for uh manhood mm -hmm. and uh word uh masculinity. That's good. Um and so yeah, so I think I, m me and my natural state, probably no, but when I step onto the court and when I look into who Jesus was, it comes out. Mm, wow. Do, do you um that's good. I think, <laughs> I think uh, figuring out how to channel that, right? Mm -hmm. I think I think is an interesting aspect of of being an elite level athlete while at the same time not losing your identity and what you do, right? Because that's that's that that becomes natural. Like in America, we're very much so like what you do for work is who you is who are. you are, and that's not that's not kingdom, not at all. And I think even with me, I struggle. Like you'll learn in the book, I struggle with anxiety a mm -hmm. lot. When I was I was the number one player in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. And I went to Florida State, and I was on anxiety medication. Mm. Nobody knew. Mm. Teammates ain't know. Parents ain't know. One coach, one teammate knew about it. But it hasn't been until I was able to divorce, and still working at it each and every day, divorce who I am from what I do mm. and finding my identity rooted in Christ. I am who God says I am. Um, you're able, I was able to fight back against the lies of the enemy that told me that I wasn't. Mm. And so growing up, went from I went from a problem – prominently black community to white community. Mm. I went from Bronx, New York to Naples, Florida when I was 10, mm. trying to fit in. My nickname was Ethiopia. Mm. So I, I quickly developed like 
that kind of self-consciousness, self-insecurity, and then the the desire to fit in and work for love. And that's yeah. where basketball came in. The better yeah. I got at it, the more they wanted to hang with me. Yeah. The girls started to like me. <laughs> and so I just gave it my all, but I always was on this roller coaster of if I play well, yeah. they're going to love me. Yeah. If I play bad, they're going to hate me. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to lose everything that I've worked so hard to gain. Huh. And um, the more that I've been able to root myself in God, you know, I am who you say I am. Yeah. I'm bold. I'm courageous in you. The more I've been able to step away from this shot being the end-off, be all yeah. of who I am. That's so good. Um, I want to get into more of your story, mm-hmm. but you mentioned NBA players talking, yeah. saying crazy things. What's the craziest thing somebody said to you on the court? You ain't got to say who it is. And has anybody? I can't even say it. And has anybody <laughs> attacked your faith? Like knowing you're 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 a man of God and all these things, and like 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 try, try to take shots at that. Yeah, no, not not in the game. You know, honestly, probably just because I've been away from it, mm-hmm. I'll probably get some of that this upcoming season for sure. I'll be ready for it, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody was like, I don't know, Jesus boy or something like that. Mm. But um, but no, I can't even say some of the some of the stuff. But it's just it's just. It kind of just comes with the territory. Guys like try to find an edge. They gonna say something about your mama. They are gonna say something about your wife. Mm. Um, not in not in even necessarily like a mean spirited way. It's mm-hmm. just like it's just getting to going at it. Mm. And the temptation is I'm gonna say it right back. Mm. <laughs> it's like, like I can't I can't I can't play on the same playing field like that. Yeah. In basketball, a lot like in you know hip hop and battle rap, there's this kind of understanding that like a little bit of trash talk right. it's, is, it's, is, it's is warranted. Okay. Do, do you, do, I, I had to start playing with a mouthpiece because I just talk too much mm. on the court. You, you give me that vibe. You know, like <laughs> I'm just going to talk and it's going to be bad and vibes. I'm going to jump in the flesh. Yeah. Bro, we used to play for an hour before Bible study and, and by the end of the game, we'd be there cussing and <laughs> then we, hilarious. and then we sit down, sit down and just be fuming like, who going to pray? <laughs> You know, okay, I guess I'll probably it was bad. That's so, hilarious. So I, I when I when I was playing, I was playing with a mouthpiece because it it would help gotta, me not. Yeah, I gotta talk. play after Bible study, bro. It was the worst. <laughs> yeah, probably right. <laughs> that would have been smarter. Get the spirit, because we'd be out there with with you know just like at the park, and then and then like it'd be eight o'clock, and we'd be like, all right, we gotta go. And then where y'all going? And like we gotta go to Bible study. Like mm-hmm. y'all going to Bible right, study? Thanks, <laughs> thanks, man. So how do you balance that aspect of like again within hip hop or within basketball culture? There's this when when you say ah, I'm gonna break your ankles, you're not literally trying to harm right, someone. Right. You're just having fun. You're talking. It's light, and you could do that with your friends. How do you balance that as a, as a follower of Christ? My mindset is, you know what would be so hard mm. is we to play a game and you to be trash talking me. And I don't say nothing. Mm. And oh, after, you, so you're that guy. And after the game, I say, God bless you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, that that's, guy. That's where okay, I'm respect, at. Respect, like, respect. I just feel like it'd be just so tough and just be like, man, respect. He, you know, he a Christian, but yeah. he but he bought it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you don't even talk with like your your homies? Uh, Not so much. Like even with teammates, like we'll, like the, in terms of like, like I'm about to win. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to, I'm about to bust you. Like I'm, I'm, I'm there for that. Yeah. But I love like the. I love the look of like, you know, you respect me. Yeah. And so when we going at it and you gotta talk to get yourself yeah. there and yeah. I ain't gotta say nothing to get myself there, yeah. I'm already there. Yeah. Uh I'm with that. Do you think there's a way to do it as a Christian? A way to ban- like banter and Yeah, where you don't cross the line. Yeah, not not I mean, in a dehumanizing way. For sure, way. for sure. There's a way. Um, because it's kind of like I think of like the UFC. Like you're trying to sell a fight when you're doing a UFC right. or a boxing match, right? You gotta make it interesting. So I think it, it kind of like bleeds into that a little bit. That would be hell. Uh, what's it? Tyson Fury was on that a mm-hmm. little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tyson Fury does a great he, job of selling he, a fight. He, uh, yeah, John then, Jones, you know, is a, he right, right, right. to be a Christian, sure. you know, he, sure. he can sell a fight. So yeah, I mean, I, I think there's definitely a way on the basketball court. I think just you just gotta be mindful, like yeah. don't take it take it left, but. We gonna we gonna win. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even. Yeah, I don't yeah. even. I wouldn't even know how to do it. Yeah. But um, it's just because of how I am. But yeah. I'm sure there's that's a way. good, man. You you a good dude. Bro. I, just, I just like I just like that <laughs> vibe. Like you just yeah, we won. God bless you, bro. And that's you, you so know dope. you was talking the craziest stuff the whole game. And yeah. Okay. Now I got a, I got I got a super random question for you. Okay. You're in Orlando. Mm. You know the homie Caleb Gordon. Yeah. Okay. I had a conversation with Caleb. Maybe we could cut flashback when we edit this. And Caleb told me with a straight face that if he wasn't making music, he'd be in the NBA. How tall is he? <laughs> He's like my height, bro. Oh, bro. Maybe an inch shorter. With a straight face. I said, Caleb. I said, come on, bro. There's <laughs> levels to it, bro. 
That's, there's levels to that's, it. That's faith. I don't knock his faith. But have you ever hooped with him? Mm-mm. Okay. I never, I never met him. I just know of him. Okay. Okay. I thought because Orlando. I, I thought I thought yeah, y'all were in the same I, circles. I know, I know of him. Um, you know, love his stuff. Love yeah. what, you know, love what he about. Okay. But, I was trying to get in a, a professional nah. assessment on if that was even possible. Uh, I, I just assumed you guys knew each other because you were in Orlando. Yeah, he was legitimately like. Yeah, I'd be in the league right now. And I've seen, I've seen some videos of him, and he could hoop. I've I seen a video, too, actually, yeah. and now that brings back my memory. I did see a, vi- a video of yeah. him hooping. He could but hoop, but again, there's levels to it. Nah. Yeah, there's levels to it. Like, I've, I've played with some guys that were, like, D1. They just got to a D1. And just me trying to guard a D1 player mm. was like, oh, it's yeah, tough. no, this is this is something else. It's even, something else. Even, shoot, over, overseas. Yeah. Akeem here play, play overseas, and, yeah. and it, 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 They're it, nice. it, it get to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... Talk to, tell me about your story, man. So you said New York. You want you want to go to the video first? Yeah, to, let's do the video. Uh, let's do the video. That way we're not we're not jumping around too much. All right. So here is the exclusive, exclusive. ladies and gentlemen. This is the exclusive. Ba, 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 ba. No one's seen this except a handful of people in the inner circle, and we got the premiere for you guys. This officially is the trailer. How, what do you call this? Commercial. It's the yeah, commercial. commercial like thirty second spot. Yeah, this joint is hard. So I'm gonna play this from the beginning and, uh, and give you guys the the play by play. True greatness is a movement. It starts with you and ends with us. Unite us. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, now hold on. This piece right here, this is by far, I think this is the coldest. That the piece that this girl's wearing, hold on, where is it? That that piece right that yeah. that piece, bro, that piece is cold. Appreciate you. That's that's probably my favorite too. That joint is a lot cold, of people man. Like that Are you guys gonna do m- multiple color waves in that? Yeah, th- this is literally just the first capsule. Like we are, yeah. it takes some time doing it kind of sure. all all kind of myself and and rolling this thing out but the hope is to get to like fully exclusive you know we're going to be dropping sportswear later this fall like the sports bra the leggings the tanks mm-hmm. for the guys the gym shorts but to do have everything that like you could you could transition from nike to united tomorrow that's mm-hmm. what we're going to get to wow man yeah this stuff is great um what is the process to do like shoes it's difficult. So there's a company called Soulworks. Uh-huh. Um, they're ex Nike and Adidas guys that like came together and said, you know, we want to just create one off shoes for yeah. guys. Yeah. And so got in touch with them. I was big on not wanting to manufacture in China. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we landed on Vietnam. Okay. They've got some, you know, better practices there and things. And so Vietnam, it took a year to well, this is what I did. Right. I'm right by UCF mm-hmm. um in Orlando and they have a design class. You know, I got in touch with the professor and I was like, look, I have a vision for a shoe. Mm-hmm. Could you turn this into an assignment mm. for the design? Oh, um, that's dope. For the design class. And everybody submitted a design to the portfolio. Mm-hmm. We picked the top five mm-hmm. and we paid them. Wow. And so we got an opportunity to like give them a job. That was their first kind of like work mm. outside of school and uh, um, worked on the design, kept tweaking it, kept tweaking it, and then brought it to life. Wow. So, so you said you got, oh, you know, it's, oh, shoot. Hold on. Give me one second. You got it? Oh, shoot. I got, I got it in my bag. I forgot. I didn't even know. Can we see? Okay. It? Yeah, for sure. Do we got to cut this out? No, no, no. Why okay. Not? Oh, shoot. Yo. Okay. So, this is really nice. This is the like exclusive. Exclusive sneak. Oh, peek. my gosh, bro. So, there are, there are five colorways. I got two with me right here. Okay. Um, I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. All right. So I'll give one to you. Yeah, dude, these are these look dope. Wow. And you so said they, they it, are the Judah one. Yeah. Um, Lion, like Judah's my middle name. Yeah. And so Lion has become something that's really, really dope to me. It's my screensaver, all that type stuff. Wow. But each shoe has a verse that coincides with the uh, with the colorway. Yeah. So that colorway is called Unconquered. Romans eight thirty seven. And that is I'm more than a conqueror. Come know, in Christ. on, bro. This one is called Triumph, and it has Second Corinthians four nine. You know we are, bro. That's dope. Wow. But not destroyed all that. And they feel great. They appreciate you. They they, they, they feel are, they feel like quality. Whoops. They feel like some words. Nikes. My bad. Thank you, Hakeem. Yeah. I mean they they feel like 
Like, cause yeah, legit. You, I've seen people like try to yes. do their own shoe yes. before. No, we, 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 we <laughs> you had, guys didn't cut corners on we these. We didn't. We had prototypes wow. and, and everything. Bro, this is amazing. Appreciate Thank you so you. much for sharing yeah, these. For sure. So one of these come out. out. What other colorway have you got? So you got this. So is, this, this is Unconquered and Triumph, and there's three okay. more. One okay. of them is a black and red pair that's called Exodus. Okay. There's a orange pair that's called Lion of Judah. And then there is a white, gold, and gray pair called Ruach. Wow. Which is the Hebrew word for Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so. Bro, yeah. this is amazing. I like, I love the logo, like the attention to detail. Mm -hmm. This is really cool. So when when can people expect to see those? So um, these are going to drop closer to the season time. Okay. And so we roll in, we're just rolling out the merch first. Um. And then we're going to do the sportswear a little bit later and okay. then kind of right before the season starts. I'll be wearing them this upcoming season and then they'll drop for people to be. Okay. Able to You'll be them. wearing them yeah, this I'll, I'll, season. Yeah, this season I'll be wearing wow. them. Wow. And then they'll be able to, I'm assuming, get them directly from the website? Right. Okay. Right. And then what's the process like? Is the goal for you guys to want to be in like the Foot Lockers and, and that kind of thing? Or is that, the goal that, just to that go direct be, consumer? That would be great. Um, starting with D2C, um, I think – it could be difficult mm -hmm. with just our who we are, our stances, and you know a lot of people like to turn things extremely political, mm -hmm. and so I could see that being a barrier. Mm. And if that's the case, we would just go brick and mortar okay. and create our own United stores, like kind of like a Lululemon type thing, mm. and go from there. Come on, bro! And is this? Are you doing this yourself, or are you getting other companies involved? And no, this, like, is, this is this is me. This is you, one hundred percent. You. This is me. I, wow! I, I've hired a. Um, a marketing company early on and okay. they helped with website creation right. and trademarks and all yeah. that stuff. And in terms of like, in terms of like putting into it, this, this is yeah. me. And the, the hope is that, you know, we do well enough that yeah. when it's time to scale, yeah. you know, we're able to bring in some other folks to help ease the the load and, and really make this a real, a real household name. Yeah, man. That's dope, bro. I would, I would, uh, I keep up. I know you did the book with daily wire. Mm -hmm. And so I keep up and we, one of the things we always talk about their office is how well they do, with launching products, yes, you know, and so they got like, uh, you seen their candy the, bar? Yes, there's the candy bar and the, <laughs> the razors. The they they do do a good job. Yeah, they do. Yeah, a so good it's, job. it's so it's exciting to 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 see you guys actually like like get it off the ground, man, yeah. and do it. It's it's been very like grassroots in terms of like hitting you up, yeah, hitting up. Just I've I've been on phone calls like a madman, yeah, um, just trying to get people to the launch right. uh, uh, party, trying to get people to push it, promote it. Yep. And, I've always been from the standpoint of I want you to know what it is right. and not just look for a shameless plug. Like I want you to come around, be a part of, get the right. heartbeat of why I'm doing right. what I'm right. doing. And then if you feel like, you know, this is something that you want to support, right. then support it. Yeah. And again, you're doing a great job of casting vision. You're doing a great mm -hmm. job of articulating like the why behind all of it, you know, and, and, and not just the, we just want to have something that's not crazy off the, yeah, you know like, what I mean? But could, like actually having like the, even the, the, the tagline, like true greatness. True greatness. You know? Could I, And I, I will, I'll share about that too. True greatness for me, um, it, it started with like, what would it look like if Christians today truly believe that they were great? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like in a true greatness sense mm -hmm. where it's like the world, we are what we do. Mm -hmm. We are the accolades that we have and mm -hmm. the, the statistics that we're able to put up. And we measure ourselves on that. But if if Christians could walk around with that 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 peace mm -hmm. and that uh that boldness and confidence that I'm truly great mm -hmm. in an eternal sense mm. and God loves me and God is with me and God is walking with me, what would we look like? How would we move? How would we preach? How would we how would we do pocket? Like yeah. how would we do anything yep. um if we if we believe that yeah. like I'm truly great, whether yep. I score, whether I don't. Whether I'm in a room with multi-millionaires and billionaires, I'm truly great because yeah. I have what they don't Yep, and not the other way around. So. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, w what we believe about the world, what we believe about ourselves is going to determine how we behave, you know? And so if we're not operating from that that mentality of greatness and that mentality of abundance, that mentality yes. of excellence, then you're going to kind of be mediocre and trash, mm -hmm. you know? And I think for too long, like Christians have been kind of, eh, you yeah, know? just if, no. That's a that's a fact. That's a fact. Like for too long, and um, and also like the idea of true greatness for me is like striving towards the values that we're trying to promote and mm. see. Mm -hmm. And so it's a lot of times, even with the whole anti woke stuff, mm -hmm. we'll beat people over the heads with mm -hmm. these are the values that right. you should be doing, but right. we ain't living up to them ourselves. Come on. And so it's like the striving for true greatness, the striving for holding up these values, the striving for 
perfection. Of course, we won't get there, but striving for abundance and excellence in everything that we do yeah. is, I think, is key. That's dope. How has it been with the folks in the NBA and some of the other players? For have you gotten a support uh, for the most part from other players? Not support because what I feel like it's this, mixed. Because <laughs> because this is what I feel like. I feel like there's a lot of people that would agree with everything you're saying. Mm. A lot of people that would agree with your stance. A lot of people uh, would 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 maybe privately be like, "Yo, man." You know, but maybe they don't want to get right. canceled. They so don't I've, want. I've, I've you had know? my fair share of underground. Oh, I bet conversations you <laughs> and guys like, yo, respect. Yeah. Um, teammates, even with the whole vaccine situation, yeah. some of them like, yo, if they try to do this again, you know, we ain't on it. Mm. But um, but yeah, I've had my fair share of guys like, you know, respect you for what you do and what you stand up for, and even some of them know about because I warn these around the gym, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. someone's like, oh, like you really doing it? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So to put on like a CEO hat mm-hmm. while in the NBA, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's been cool. It's yeah, been, it's been dope. And so, so uh, for the most part, behind the scenes, you're getting a lot of support. Yeah, even though publicly they're probably being quiet. Right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 I, you know what I did? <laughs> what, what I did was tough. It was yeah. hard, man. It was, and I'll paint the picture for you. Like when everything was going with the, you know, BLM and everything, like it was just. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Like you had corporations, you know, commercials and the Instagram blackout, all that type of stuff. It's just like the heat was really on for who you were with. Mm-hmm. What was it really about? Um, you know, white people scrambling, black people scrambling to be a part of the movement. Mm-hmm. And so I'm thrown into this situation where we're in the bubble and uh, uh, we have a team meeting. Mm-hmm. So the, the president, everybody comes in like, look, this is you guys' decision. Mm-hmm. Some teams have already kneeled, and you guys figured it out. So we go into this meeting, and now it's just team only. And everybody's like, yo, what are we even having this meeting for? Mm. This is a no-brainer. Mm. You know, this is no choice. Like, everybody just kneel, and we mm. go through, go about our business. And then one of my teammates looks at me. I'm like, why are you looking at me? <laughs> why are you looking mm. at me? He said, Jonathan, what are you going to do? Mm. I was like, look, fellas, I'm not going to kneel, and I'm not going to wear the T-shirt. Mm. And then just everybody erupts. Oh my gosh! Here really? we go. Here we go. Here's, uh, here's baby Jesus. <laughs> Here we go. Um, and just was able to talk about it with him. Like I, I see the problem. Mm. I, I'm not discounting the problem. I'm not mm. saying that there's not a problem, but I don't think this is the solution. Mm. I know for myself that if we are going to see true change, hearts have to change. Mm. And kneeling ain't going to do that. Wearing mm. a t-shirt ain't going to do that. The gospel will. Mm. And so. I just decided, like, look, this is what I'm going to do. And also, I was on the phone again with my pastor the night before it happened. Mm -hmm. And I told him, like, I don't think you understand how crazy this is going to be. I'm going to be a coon. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be all this type of stuff. People are going to say what they got to say. It's going to go viral. And he said to me, you cannot stand for God and God not stand for you. Mm -hmm. And then that was like the mic drop. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to go through with it. Wow. What? I think is is fascinating, and you could tell me if you <laughs> if you feel slightly vindicated in hindsight, because not the sentiment, but the organization. Come on, man! Yes, <laughs> like sixty million th- squandered look, around, a th- a multiple percent. multiple mansions bought. Come on. You know, and 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 like I personally don't know anybody that donated to that organization right. because I know people really doing advocacy right, work. Right. I know people really on the front lines. Yeah. You know, in these different parts of the country. Really do so. I don't know anyone that d- that donated to that organization. So when it all kind of came out that they were they you know they mismanaged funds or whatever the official narrative is, um, definitely bought a couple mansions you mm-hmm. know for a couple family members. That's that that's that's. D- was there a part of you that kind of like man? I told y'all like I told y'all this wasn't what it you know like this was yeah like I, the whole time I was just like kneeling for the national anthem and wearing the t shirt mm-hmm. are not the same thing as supporting Black Lives mm-hmm. and. I, you know, even with the church that I go to in Orlando, we've done work, mm-hmm. housing, feeding, mm-hmm. uh, back to school, clothing, clothing people, clothing kids. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, I know that that's not the only way to show support for black lives. That's mm-hmm. not the only way to enact change in a, in a society. Mm-hmm. And so to see all that stuff that came out and, and it's just like, man, like, like am I, I won't come out and say it like to your <laughs> face, but inside I'm like, yo, like I told, yeah. <laughs> like, I told you. Yeah. But, um. But yeah, it is what it is, and uh, but it, it would still be the same even if they didn't. Mm. It was that I did not, I didn't agree with the tone, I didn't mm-hmm. agree with the rhetoric, mm-hmm. and 
I didn't think that it was something that was truly going to be able to bring people together. Yeah. It was just, it was still pitting people against each other based yep. on race. Yep. And so, yeah. Well, I, I remember, so a buddy of mine does some work with the, the and campaign. Um, and it's like a, it's like a Christian campaign to, to deal with some of these issues. Nice. Right. And so I remember hearing about black lives matter in like 2015, I was in Atlanta really? and he was like, yeah, man, like, it's ran by two lesbian women, and like they want to disrupt the nuclear. <laughs> yes. nu they want to disrupt the nuclear family. They was, and I was they like, was what? On that. They was on yeah, that, bro. And then they changed the website. Yes, yes. And I was like, for real? And he's like, yeah. And this is like, this would be one of my. This would be one of my friends that like, at the time, would have been dismissed as like woke. Like right. he was like really out there, yeah. you know. And so when he told me that, I was always kind of like, oh, that's interesting, you know. What I like about what you said is that it, it almost sounds like you took a middle of the road approach where you said, look. There are issues. Right. Things do need to change. However, I just don't think this is the way right. to change anything. However, we all fall short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, if you're throwing stones at a person mm -hmm. or a race, mm -hmm. you're throwing stones from a glass house. Yep. yep. And so that's what it was for me. It, it, it seemed like at the time it was just about, just say it plainly, it was about white people, you know, bowing down yep. to, to what happened. We, yep. we have this moment and... Because of this moment, we are now vindicated mm. to go about it in the way that we want to. And so it was just like, look, I absolutely I see the problem. Absolutely yeah. I see for advocacy and how to mm -hmm. go about it the mm -hmm. right way. Mm -hmm. um, but I just didn't agree. Yeah. Do, was there, after that moment, you were definitely embraced by the conservative mm -hmm. space, which a lot of that space doesn't even acknowledge as a problem, right? right? A lot of that space... Um, would say there isn't a problem, would mm -hmm. say that, you know, uh, which kind of straw man and be like, George Floyd was made into a martyr. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, no, he wasn't. Like, it, that, that's not what happened, right? Was there ever a part of you that was like, well, wait, whoa, whoa, wait a minute now. Like, I'm now embraced by this community yeah. over here that, that can't even acknowledge there's, there's a problem. For sure. Know? And I have, I have, even with going, like, you know, I did I did Ben Shapiro's show. Mm -hmm. I did Candace's show. Um, even with that, I was always trying my best to stay clear about what was it about for me. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it was about the gospel. That's At good. the end of the day, it was about um, seeing there was a problem, but offering a different solution to both white and black people. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, people take it the way they want to go. And at the same time, nobody from the other side called me mm. to have a conversation and think really? about nobody. Wow. Nobody. And so I went where I could get my message out in terms of, where I was coming from and, and what I felt was right for me. And that's what, that's where it led to. Interesting. I, um, yeah, that's, that's really interesting. I'm gonna call you. I remember at those times, um, Sean King was following me on Instagram and mm. I remember I would lean into it and be like, Hey man, like you might want to sit down and have some dialogue across the aisle and have some dialogue with other Christians that see it differently. And there was very little effort to, to have any sort of like yeah. meaningful dialogue. I, I think it's just, it's, it's that, uh, it's that king, it's kingdom and culture. It's like, even in that moment for me, it was like, what is more important mm. in terms of I'm, I'm a black man, the culture is riding for this, like, mm. but what is most important? Am I going to put culture over kingdom in this mm. situation? Or I'm going to put kingdom over culture and say, you know what? Again, I see a problem, but that's not the solution. Yeah. The solution is a kingdom solution. Yeah. And so. So from your, from your vantage point, the solution would be hearts transformed by mm -hmm. the power of the gospel. And then uh, how, how would, what other solutions would you present to, to the, to the issue that we saw? So that, that's, that's where it gets, I mean, not, not necessarily sticky, but it's like when it comes to the black community, mm -hmm. um, I think there's twofold. There's, there's, there's acknowledgement mm -hmm. and then there's responsibility. Mm -hmm. So when I look at the black community today and when I look at the white community today, I think that there is room 100% and should be for white people mm -hmm. to acknowledge um, the plight of African Americans mm -hmm. to where it is because of what happened in slavery. Um, we're we're in this position today, mm -hmm. and there can there should be compassion. There mm -hmm. should be there should be a, a, a lending hand to help your fellow, and even just talking about Christians at this point mm -hmm. to help your brother or sister in Christ too. Mm -hmm raise and become better but then the question is who does the responsibility fall on mm -hmm. for real cultural change mm -hmm. um and i don't think that falls on white people mm -hmm. and so i think that once you get past 
the the the, the kingdom of it. Okay, we all fall short of God's glory. Um, we need to love people the way that God loves us, which is okay. in spite of our faults, in spite mm-hmm. of in spite of our mistakes, um, and love our enemies on both sides. Yeah. Um, because both people feel wrong, both people feel this and that. Both, mm-hmm. One person doesn't feel responsible for what their ancestors did four hundred mm-hmm. years ago, or mm-hmm. or even closer than that. Um, but then you get into what are the solutions today? Yeah. And when I look at, you know, people talk about police brutality, people talk about all these different things that are valid. But when you look at the black community, is that the number one threat to you becoming a functioning uh, citizen mm-hmm. today? I don't think so. Mm. And so I think acknowledgement on one side, but also the responsibility is on us mm-hmm. to take hold of our lives and become something because in today's day we can. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's tricky because um, police brutality was slash is an issue, mm-hmm. um, in, 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 and so and then the way that impact it's not just a black issue. It's going. It's a lot of white folks to get killed by yeah, <laughs> police too. Thanks. So that 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 becomes so. It's like a there's an issue with this specific profession having unchecked power the right. way the police unions are set up all which by the way it's it's really interesting a lot the, like teachers unions yeah like the people who are very uh uh, uh anti-union because they're capitalist mm-hmm. are like ironically pro police union <laughs> and then, like that, that doesn't make <laughs> any it. sense to me right and so the the way these police unions are are, are set up isn't helpful and so i think the body cams have helped mm-hmm. you know what i mean like the body cams the accountability has helped in that regard and I think there are things, so it's like, you have this issue with like this specific demographic. These guys are probably overworked, mm-hmm. specifically police officers. Yes. They're oftentimes underpaid, you know, and it's high stress. Yes. You're seeing the worst, the worst of humi- yes. humanity. And and then like, who's going to come in contact with law enforcement more? Not the people in Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. Who's statistically more likely to be in poverty, right? Oftentimes people that come from black and brown neighborhoods yeah. are going to be so so it's like this like chicken of the egg concept, you know? And so it disproportionately seems to have impacted black people, but it it, it impacts poor white people too, yeah. you know? And so I think like dealing with the issue of police brutality, but somehow that got backdoored into like America is a systemically racist right. country. It, it, it got backdoored into that is the number one right. problem facing black Americans right. today. Right. And I, I, I would disagree. Yeah. I, I think the hardest thing to come out of today is not, or when you talk about something systemic, mm-hmm. it's not it's not your color. Mm-hmm. Um, it's your bank account. Mm. It's it's poverty mm-hmm. that is the hardest thing to overcome yeah. in today's day yeah. for, for across the board. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's poor white, poor Hispanic, poor, yeah. poor, poor, poor all of that. It's just that black people are dis- disproportionately poor because of slavery. Right. And so, but again, it goes back to what can we do today yep. in terms of our own life, our own agency yep. to to mitigate that. Yep. It's education, yep. it's family, yep. it's putting these, these values and these priorities first above, you know, to me, there is a, there's a, there's a movement to try to prop up the things that can hold you back mm. um, and to make that your primary fo- focus yeah. and to make that a victim, you know, I can't do, I mm. can't be because of the, all these things in my way. But if you actually are going to go based on statistics, if you're actually going to go based on what's going on, they're less of a problem than they've ever been. Yeah. Yeah. And and the tough part is when you talk about poverty, like a lot of poverty is environment. Like yes. a lot of poverty is, you know, they've done studies and this is, this is the part that makes the colorism of, of, of systemic racism tricky is they've done studies and they find out that like Nigerian first generation citizens oftentimes outperform uh, white families. You know, the highest earners in America are Indians. Come on. You know, and so it's like, well, what do you what do you do with that? And so I I, I go to like, okay, my buddies that have been, I got a lot of close friends that have been to prison, like spent the majority of their adult life in prison and wow. they're trying to clean it up in their 30s. Mm-hmm. And you look at their families and then you look at their grandparents and you look at their, you know, and it's like, you're talking multi-generational Dudes that, uh, like, I got a close friend of mine. He used to, um, he, he used to stay with me when he got out. He he did over ten years in federal prison. Then mm. did five years before that. His brother caught a murder charge because of a fist fight. And then you go oh, one wow. generation below. They're all from the south side. Well, I think the west side of Chicago. You know, and so it's like a multi generational aspect of not just poverty, but like a hopelessness. Yes. You know, and that's not necessarily just based on implicit bias and how you're perceived that's right. based in like a multi-generational burden and and, and how you see yourself and how and, you see and, yourself and, yeah and how that all shakes out 
Yeah. So I, I think that that is where that's where Christ comes in. Yeah. Like you, Christ can take someone who has been in a hopeless situation and give them hope in a sense that I can do, I yeah. can be because now yeah. God is on my side. Yeah. So even where there is prejudice, yep. even where there is forces that are holding me back, they're not stronger than God. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's good. And and that's and, and ironically enough, that's what I've seen. All my friends that have came out. I got one buddy of mine, um, am- amazing human being. He used to be Zach's roommate. Um, he got out, and when he was in, I mean, he he had a serious felony mm. charge. He he got out. I think he did over a decade. Wow. He got out, and in in prison, he did this like Shark Tank thing. You know the show TV yeah. show. So they did that for prisoners. Really? Yeah, but not not the actual show, like a version of that wow. where everybody comes together. He won the whole thing came out and was able to start a cleaning business wow. and has, I want to say, five employees now and does nonprofit work where he mentors Beautiful. kids. And so he's been out six years, five, six years, has two kids, third one on the way, married, running a business, multiple employees. He's crushing it. I mean, this dude was away for a decade, mm. you know, for like a very, very, very heinous, serious crime. And just got another chance. And it was the mentality shift of being there. And he's still dealing with remnants of it. Like yeah. he still has yeah, mental sure. mental health issues from sure. it and all that kind of stuff. But when you see folks turn around to your point, I think, I think a, a, a lot of it is a lot of it is imagination and inspiration, just mm-hmm. believing what's possible. Right. And then a lot of it, I think, is environment and community, right? And that's and 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 to your point, like the gospel kind of addresses all that. Right. Right. I've I've seen it. I've seen it up close. Um People that are coming off drugs, people that are coming off just in the church. We we we're in the you know we're in the city, yeah. And so I've seen people be able to grab a hold of the vision that God has for them, yeah. Um, and turn things around, yeah. And it, it's 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 you know we have a we have a pastor in our church who sold drugs for the majority of his life, mm. and now he has a family, now he has a business, now he has kids and a wife and all that stuff and stuff. And it came it came from the mentality shift. It yeah. came from allowing God into the situation and for him to take control of yeah. who you are and where you're yeah. going. That's good. Do you think that sometimes people, conservative leaning people will sometimes struggle with the empathy aspect of it? 100%. You know what I mean? We're like, 100%. like these are, these are humans that are broken who don't have Christ. Some of them do have Christ, mm-hmm. you know, uh, or had Christ when they were kids, but we forget that like, man, people react to trauma different. You know, you could have two, you could have twins, both in a yeah. parent with a uh, parents are alcoholic. And abusive. One grows up, never drinks alcohol. The other one grows up to become an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like people yeah, would yeah. just react to the same traumas differently. It's it's facts. It's like uh, uh, what I think is difficult for them is that what it is that they're reeling up against. Mm-hmm. So that when say like a, a headline comes out, mm-hmm. um, police brutality is the number one thing holding black people back. Mm-hmm. Um, that may not be true, but that's what they're reacting to. Mm-hmm. No way. That's not the truth. They're not reacting to the actual black people that are actually mm-hmm. either going through things or have gone through things or even trying to change their lives. They're attacking the narrative mm. that's being put out. And it's the same thing that goes from the, you know, the left that's to good. the right. That's good. And so I think if you can see it from a human being perspective yeah. that we we have been emotionally manipulated to be angry at, mm. at, at things or angry at people and we all have pre-disposed you know disposed judgments and yep. outlooks on people yep. around us yep. uh regardless of what you look like or who you are and so i just think that being able to see things from a human side of you is the answer yeah. and the key to being able to have real change yeah i think having access to people of inspiration that, mm-hmm. that, that 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 can actually point you to what they did and walk you through how they got to where they got to is also huge um yeah man i, th- I think that's good and i think it's, it's 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 hard to have these conversations as someone that, that that tends to be more conservative and in some of the conservative streams, mm-hmm. this is the, this is the thing that gets me dis- dismissed as like cultural Marxist. You know what I mean? Because because really? I'll acknowledge, yo, like it it ain't this it ain't fair for everybody. Right. You know what I mean? Like there are uh, problems that impact people. I don't think we have racist laws now, but right. redlining and 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 all these things like that wasn't too long ago. No, you know? no, no. And I've seen it impact multi generationally people and and. The, you, when you remove the human element and you're just arguing against headlines, right. you know, or you're backdooring ideas that don't like my, my friends who think systemic racism is an issue, not the issue, but an issue. Um, they're not Marxist. <laughs> like they're not trying to overthrow oh, right. like capitalism. Every, every, yeah, every, every, they yeah. throw everybody in the same yeah. boat. Yeah. Um, like, like, like my buddy KB or Lecrae or all these guys, right? Like yeah. um, I'm probably a bit more conservative than they are, but like 
they're all entrepreneurs. Like they're all running businesses with mm-hmm. employees. Like they're not trying to. Oh, no one, no one wants to overthrow right, capitalism. Right, right, for sure, for sure. <laughs> you know. But the moment you say anything is an issue, you get you get lumped into as like this like wokester. You know. Yeah, this, to your point, there's there's just no more nuance anymore. Right. Right. Like there's nobody. There's there's nobody. I mean, look, that would be a dope video of <laughs> you sitting down with a Lecrae or a KB and yeah. having that conversation. What does it look like? as a Christian today to talk politics mm-hmm. um, or to just figure out, you know, how to vote and where, yeah. where you stand on certain issues and yeah. things. And so, uh, so yeah, it's just, there's just no more conversations. Yeah. And that's, that's what's difficult. Everybody is, if you learn one thing about somebody, you throw them in a boat, yes. you throw them in one group and okay, yeah. that, that group is this, they're woke, yeah. they're Marxist, they're that. Yeah. Um, but you don't account their experiences. Yep. You don't account what they've been through, where right. they come from. Right. And, uh, how that can be influenced and what they believe. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and, and and for me, it was always it was always this, and this might trip you out, but for me, I've been to maybe eight funerals in my life. Really. And two of them were of unarmed black men killed by police mm. that were never hashtags, that were never you know what I mean, nothing. And so like I know people personally like that these weren't viral stories. Like right. I know people personally that that have been impacted by this that. Uh, I'm just like, yeah, like this, this is an issue. Like mm-hmm. this, this is an issue. And to your point, is it the number one issue? Probably not, you know, like if you're looking at the math, but it is an issue. And so, yes, yeah, so I've dealt with it. But what I like about what you what you say is that you drive it home to the gospel, you right. know, and I think that's, that's where it needs to go. I think we need to look at it from the lens of, hey, we're ultimately dealing with broken people who are spiritually blind. That's, that's the same thing as saying, look, it's always going to be an issue mm-hmm. no matter what. We look, you know, the world is going to be what the world is. Right. It's always going to be an issue. There's always going to be race problems. Right. Um, but as the church, we can reflect the kingdom. Yeah. What does it actually look like to have white, black, mm-hmm. all, and, and this, for me, what Unite Us is, it's rallying around the values. It's yes. rallying around the ideals that I think lead to a prosperous society. Yeah. No matter if you're white, no matter if you're black. Um, and a big thing about it is going to be helping people yeah. for me. And, um, going into communities and making change. And we do it. We, we have a homeless shelter right in Orlando mm. um, for men. And so we, we do the work. Mm. And so uh, that, that's what it is for me. But yeah. Yeah. That's dope, man. Um, So, so tell me about more about your story. Yeah. So uh, I grew up in Bronx, New York. Okay. Um, and I, I'll get into how I got saved, but um, grew up in Bronx, New York. My dad was a Holy Ghost roller. Mm. We was in church every day. Um, learning whole Psalms. We had to memorize them and, and, and Sam in church. Uh, and then when I was 10, my parents split up mm. and I talked about how that transition was very difficult for me. Struggle with anxiety, struggle with self image, all mm-hmm. this different stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a foundation, but I didn't understand what would it look like to have a real relationship with Christ where mm-hmm. it was, it was, it was tangible mm-hmm. and you walked with God and you talked with God and God was leading your footsteps. I didn't, I didn't get all that. I just, you know, growing up in a Pentecostal church, you just see the spirit, Mm -hmm. you see all that stuff and you just kind of roll with it. It wasn't until I got to, I got drafted Mm -hmm. and not getting into the story of how I got saved. I was living my life. Mm. I was like, look, I'm in the NBA. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be and do everything that that an NBA Mm -hmm. player can, can be and do. Mm -hmm. And so I was in it. Um, and I remember going to the club. I remember going home and sometimes just looking myself in the mirror and be like, who are you? Mm. You know, what are you doing? Um, and I, I think that goes back to my roots, having those seeds planted in me. It's like, I know it's not me. Mm. I know I'm trying to fit an image and a mold of the, the people around me, yeah. the other guys. And so one day I'm on the elevator and this guy walks on the elevator and he stops me. And he says, I can tell you how to be great. Mm. I'm like, how? Tell me. Mm. He says, you have to know Jesus. Mm. And I was like, man, I know Jesus. I'm a Christian. Mm. But I just blew it off. And then I kept seeing him. And every time I saw him, he was like, you should come to lunch with me. Mm. And I'm like, man, I don't want to go to lunch with you <laughs> at all. And so uh, I said to him, we saw him so many times. I said, look, if I see you again, I'll go to lunch with you. Mm. See him again. Mm. We go to lunch. He's talking about God a little bit. We talk about it. I had this thing where I I didn't like organized religion mm-hmm. or pastors because mm-hmm. when I was at Florida State um, and I was going through my stuff, one of my trainers invited me to church with her, went to church with her. And I was loving it. I was having a great time at the church. And then this big scandal happened oh, with man. the pastor yeah. and the congregant and all this different stuff. And uh, that was my excuse, though. Mm-hmm. It was my excuse to say, this isn't for me. Mm-hmm. And um, and my pastor says all the time now, like, you know, you have stuff happen on your job. You have stuff happen in your life, but you, right. don't, you don't cut that off. Right. Because you understand the yeah. necessity of, of earning a living. And so um, 
I go to lunch with them. After I go to lunch, I'm like, look, okay, I ain't got to talk to this guy no more. I ain't got to see him. Um, then I went to a chapel service. So in the NBA, 60 minutes before every game, mm-hmm. there's a chaplain. Mm-hmm. And you can go to it. And one of my teammates invited me. I said, yeah, look, I'm, you know, I'll go to chapel. I go to chapel, and the verse of the day is Luke 644. Luke 646. Mm-hmm. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? <laughs> and I was like, oh, shoot, that's me. Yeah. Like, if I had enough bad games in a row, I'll switch my whole music up. Mm. I'll go from Drake to gospel. <laughs> 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 I'll switch the whole thing up. i was like, shoot, I need to get right. Something wrong. I need to get right. And so, and if I started playing good again, yeah. I slowly, uh, slowly just inch back. Yeah. What's that new Drake? <laughs> and so, so that's where I was. But I could tell, like, I didn't actually really care about what Christ had to say. Mm. And I had never known Jesus to be that confrontational mm. in a sense of like, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and I do what I say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have this image of like this baby Jesus and, right, right. you know, hippie and all that stuff. And so I started to literally look into it and I was like, look, it's either I'm going to drop the whole Christian label altogether yeah. or I'm going I'm to dive in. Like, yeah. what does it actually mean? Yeah. Christian apologetics. Come on. Uh, William Lane Craig. Yep. Uh, John Lennox. Yep. Frank Turek. Yep. Um, all of these guys, I start just digesting everything. YouTube wow. videos. Um, Ravi Zacharias, just just researching it all. And, and what year is this? This is my first year in the league, okay. rookie. And so uh, I can't shake the whole Luke 646, so I'm diving into it. I literally took a course. So Biola University is like an online. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I literally took a course because I was yeah. just like, I want to know. My buddy, uh, Dr. Sean McDowell, teaches yeah, in yeah, that I just would, program. I want to yeah. know the truth. Yeah. Um, fast forward, I'll kind of cu- cut it up here, but fast forward, uh, my old trainer, mm-hmm. high school trainer, comes to Orlando, and we go watch a Christian movie. Mm. Movie's terrible. Mm-hmm. We go watch Thor. We movie hop. We're at the movie theater for like four hours. I leave. He's asking me, "Where are you at with God?" Mm. And I'm like, "Man, I'm thinking. Like, I'm I'm researching. I'm watching videos. I'm reading my word. All this different stuff." And uh, he says, "If you knock, the door's gonna be open to it. You keep asking, you're gonna find the answers." So finally, I'm leaving out of the movie theaters, and as I'm driving. And I'm turning onto the street. There's a car that's turning onto the street Mm -hmm. that I'm turning off of. Mm -hmm. And our cars kind of meet like this. Mm. And I look, and it's the guy from the elevator. Again? Again. This man. (laughs) It's the guy from the elevator. You can't can't shake this guy. It's like midnight. (laughs) And uh, today, what's funny is the story of actually why he was out there late was because... um, his wife ate his food. <laughs> oh man! And so he, was, so he like, was out to get food. No, he he was out just blowing off steam. Oh, okay. Like he didn't have no oh, that's food. funny. And so we uh, and so I rode down the window. He rose down the window, and I'm like, "What the heck?" And I'm telling, saying to myself, "God wants this guy in my life." Mm. And I said, "Look, you and me breakfast tomorrow." Now I bring the story full circle. Um, we go to breakfast. I'm telling him that I was reading in the Bible about how whatever you do for the least of these, you do for me. Yep. I uh. So I had this idea that I was going to buy a bunch of burgers. It was around November now, Thanksgiving. I was going to buy a bunch of burgers and hand it out to the homeless. Mm-hmm. He says to me, you can't do that. Mm. He says, if you're going to feed people, you got to feed people right. Mm. He says he has a catering company. And uh, um, if I buy the food, he'll cook it. I buy the food. I, I go to Sam's Club with him. I'm following him to Sam's Club. And I'm thinking to myself, what are you doing? Mm. You don't know who this guy is. We go to Sam's Club. I buy the food. A week later, I get a text message of an address. Mm-hmm. I go to the address. There's a line of 200 homeless people. Mm. I hop in line. I put my hand in on them, helping feed the people. Mm-hmm. There's a young lady next to me named Takita, mm-hmm. who's my wife today. Oh, wow. So I met her there. What a trip. Yeah, I met her there. Um, I was injured at the time. I hurt my ankle. They take me inside. He asked me to pray over me. Um, he prays over my ankle. And I go home that night, and I'm just thinking to myself, like, like is God real? Yeah. Like, is, is this real? Like, yeah. I, I felt like, I felt like I was loved. Yeah. Like I was so used to working for love. Yep. I got to do this. I got to do. But like somebody out there is organizing my footsteps, mm. setting stuff up that I don't understand. And I remembered the whole kind of Jesus prayer from youth group. Mm-hmm. You know, come into my mm-hmm. heart, be mm-hmm. Lord of my life. I got down on the side of my bed for the first time that I had did in Orlando. And I said it. And then next thing you know, um, I'm talking to the guy again. He's like, look, you should come to church with me. I'm like, look, if you're cool, your pastor has to be cool. Mm-hmm. I go to the church. They introduce the pastor, and it's him. Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's so dope. 
I've been going to the church now for six years. Um, wow. He's been, you know, he's been my mentor. He's been my spiritual father. Um, has walked me through all of the different trials and tribulations that I've gone through with yeah. the league and everything, just in life. And I married the young lady that I was next to. Wow. In the feeding line. We got a daughter today, two months old. And so that's my kind of coming to Jesus story. Bro, that's so dope. What was what's what's interesting about that? So you're talking about apologetics, which I came to the faith through the door of apologetics. Really? I, I read um Josh McDowell's The New Evidence That Demands a Verdict, uh, in my sophomore year of high school. And that was really like, okay, Jesus is God. That's mm -hmm. like what solidified it for me. But before that, I was just kind of going to church and you know, I said I said the prayer, I put my hand up, the whole mm -hmm. thing. But the apologetics is what did it. But even when you describe it, right, like apologetics is a tool, but the the evidence or the proof comes in hindsight, right? Yes. Like, like, like apologetics gives us enough confidence to say, this is more true than not. Yes. But we don't have video camera footage of Jesus bodily rising that's, from the grave. That's exactly what it was for yeah. me. Apologetics brought me to the edge of the cliff. Yes. And the personal yeah. moment that God revealed himself to me yeah. in that moment of saying, oh shoot, there yeah. really is a God. Yeah. That was when I jumped off. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think apologetics is a fantastic tool yeah. to get people to where, yes. to get people to that edge yeah. of like, this could be real. This, And then once, you, once you're open to that, yeah. God can reveal himself. Then God reveals himself. Then you look back at hindsight and you go, oh shoot. The last six years of he my life, himself the whole time. God orchestrated all these steps down to the woman you married. Yes. To, and, and, and you know, the trippy part is we think about like, because, you know, the, the whole like free will providence thing could be a trip to think about. Right. Um, but like you think about it and now like y'all got a baby. Yeah. So now there's a human involved. Right. And so it's the same thing for me. Like I remember sitting down with my wife, um, bro, almost 19 years ago to the date, 19 years and a month, two months to the date. Sat down and we sat down at the Starbucks down the street. And I remember sitting down and I, I felt this like, this is your wife. Mm. And I was like, we were just grabbing coffee. She was helping me promote a show. Wow. You know, and and like people would be like, yeah. And I never told her that, by the way. I never put the <laughs> don't, yeah. don't do that. Yes, Fellas, you, don't do that. That's thank you bad for that. game. That, that's, that's yeah, good. that's that ain't good the caveat. riz. All that's right. <laughs> but but I didn't tell her this until after we were married. Right, you know, we good. got married four years good. later. Because you know, we love that. People do that, man. They had it. Yeah. We had a dream. We yeah. had a vision. You, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and, but in hindsight, so, so we got married four years later, but now, you know, fast forward, we've been together 19 years and we got two kids, mm. you know, and like, you can't tell me God's not real. Like, you can't, on the other, like, there's another human here. Yeah. Because when we sat down in Starbucks, I felt like the Holy Spirit told me, this is your right. And that, and that doesn't happen all the time, by the way. Right. I'm not one of those, like, God told me, right. every week God told me something new kind of guys. Like, it's happened. A, a dozen times where God's like distinctly showed yeah. me things in my walk. But now you fast forward and there's other humans here that are going to have humans that are like, it's a trip to think yeah. about, you know? And, I, and again, I think about that when I look at her now, yeah, I, yeah. sometimes we just laying down, I'm looking at her, I'm like, man, I could have made so many other decisions yes. in my life. Yes. And I wouldn't be at this moment. Yep. And a lot of times for me, I get a fresh perspective on it because I have what a lot of people want. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the money, the yep. whatever. Yep. And, I can tell you it's not enough. Mm -hmm. I can tell you it doesn't sustain you. I can tell you it's not a real foundation for life. It's mm. a facade. Mm. And so being able to have that kind of dual perspective mm -hmm. to now saying my life didn't really start till I gave my life to Christ. Mm. Everything that I'm doing today has come out of submission and obedience mm -hmm. and find like all I did was hoop and play video games. Mm -hmm. That's all I did and smoke. Mm -hmm. Like that's 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 who I was. I played video games, I played basketball. I would smoke, I would do my thing, you know, with the girls, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's all I was. Mm -hmm. But now when I look at myself today, um, not to brag, but you talked about being an author, being, you know, starting, it's my life has blossomed mm -hmm. the more that I've given it to mm -hmm. Christ. And so I have that perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a trip to think about, like, all you did. Because even when you describe that, like, I don't know you very well, but, like, I know we've we've hung out one time before, and I obviously keep up with what you do. But when you say all you did was play video games, play play ball and smoke. I'm Fortnite. Just, that's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's it. Right? I mean, you, then, you you got a book, you got a yeah. brand, you got a, So you that's know. the same thing of saying, like, all of that is in everybody. Yeah. In a sense of, like, your God-given purpose is in you, yep. but until you tap into that, then you could be somebody who could have the capability of all this, but mm. just settling, mm. and you don't even know it. You just think that that's all that you are, that's mm. all that you do. And there's so many guys like that around the league and just on the in, in our universe, in our planet, that just, that are just are. 
and yeah. don't know that what's on the inside of them. Yeah. Yeah. What's been the the journey like sharing your faith within the the league? Yeah. It's been it's been I would say it's been there's there's ups and downs to it. Like I'm I'm very much from the camp of like I want to show you mm-hmm. um more than tell you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm not necessarily like somebody that's going to preach to my teammates and mm-hmm. tell them like, you know, God told me this and mm-hmm. you need to hear this, then the third. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I have my teammates respect because they know who I am, mm-hmm. where it's like, they don't have to guess. They don't have to like, you know, they'll, they'll joke. This is, this is, we, we were playing a game. And so we were over at one of my teammates' house mm-hmm. and we were playing a game and it was, um, you know, that you, you pull a card and it says the person who's most likely to do this, the person who's whatever. And then, out of the group, y'all decide on who that is. Mm-hmm. And so the question was, who has the best life? Mm. Crickets. Mm. Crickets. And then somebody says, I think Jonathan got the best life. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, and I'm like, oh, snap. Like, That's crazy. That hit me where yeah. it's like, they see it. Mm. You know, in, the, in, the, in, 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 that, in that perspective where it's like, you may think that as a Christian, you can't do this, you can't do mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. You holier than thou. That's how people kind of see you. Mm-hmm. But to see that the life that I'm living, you know, even a few of them could pick up on that is a great life. Yeah. That's so dope, man. That's beautiful. Um, wh- t- Tell me about writing the book because because that was like, that came out of left field. Yeah, like, it, I'm it, like, it, yo. It, it did. I get my pastor. Yeah. So my I was injured. I was at home with a torn ACL mm. and my pastor came over dancing. Mm-hmm. And he said to me, you need to write a book. Mm. And he said, people know your stand, mm-hmm. but they don't know your story. Oh, that's good. And that's relevant because so many people took it as Jonathan Isaac is the most courageous guy, mm-hmm. bold, all of this, but they don't know what I came out of mm. and who I am as a person and the things that I came out of as a kid. Mm-hmm. And so being able to offer that perspective that look at this reality of a transformational relationship with Jesus because mm. The Jonathan that you see today wasn't the Jonathan of old, mm. and uh, being able to tell that story was 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 difficult. Yeah, um, but it was dope. What was it like working with with Daily Wire and 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 Ben, ben Shapiro and all it those was, guys? It was cool. Like, you know, people will throw around what they want. You know, they're racist, they're this, mm-hmm. that, and the third. Um, I, I, people say that about Ben Shapiro. Yeah, for oh, sure. He's, okay. Yo, he, to, to a lot of people, he a white supremacist. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Jewish guy, yes, the white supremacist. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> you, like the the DMs that I've gotten, the messages that I've gotten, and like yeah. posting a picture or something like that. But um, in that instance, to me, even if they were racist, yeah. they put ideals and ideology over race uh. because they said, "Here is a black young man that." in some way, shape, or form, shares some of the same values that we respect and we promote, Mm -hmm. and we want to give him a platform. Mm. And so this Jewish white guy gave a black Christian, you know, he doesn't believe that Jesus is the, you know, Mm -hmm. the Messiah, a platform to say Jesus is the Messiah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And so, you know, they have my respect. Again, may not agree with everything that they put out, everything that they go against, everything that they do, but I respected them for that. Yeah. Because... I, I am different from what they what they represent in a, in a lot of ways. Did you guys? I know obviously you wrote the book, but did you guys ever get to talk faith? Yeah, and that we, kind of we, stuff? we we got to sit down. Um, you know, even we sat down with me, him, my pastor, my mm-hmm. wife, and my pastor was dropping nuggets, like mm-hmm. <laughs> dropping mm-hmm. little nuggets of of faith and 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 that God is up to something yeah. and things like that. Just to, I mean, just he's a pastor, he's doing what he's doing. Yeah, but um. But no, Ben. Ben is an interesting dude. He's like, you know, he's, he's he 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 believes in what he believes in, and and you know, more power to him. Yeah. But um, but yeah, he was cool, and he he wanted it to be successful. Yeah. And that was a part of what I respected. Like, now, did you ever see him and William Lane Craig together? No. Oh, bro, you gotta go back and watch that. William Lane Craig grills him about oh, the resurrection. Oh, okay, no, hold on. I thought you were talking about uh, like in person. No, no, no. no I, I saw meant, the video. You saw the video. Yes, that yes. was good. L- William Lane Craig is my favorite. Yeah. He's he's the, he's the top dog. Yeah. So I, I've watched so many of his videos and debates and stuff like that. So yeah. no. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, that, and, that and William, one, there was one more pat. There was a pastor. Um, he had he had John MacArthur on. Yes. Surprisingly, John MacArthur, which I was like, that's an interesting yes. combination. Yes. But with the William Lane Craig, I thought what I appreciated what I appreciate a lot about Ben is that he has very strong views, mm. um, and a lot of which I, I agree with. But I appreciate that he will 
allow people he disagrees with to come on his platform, platform talk. whether they're Christians, whether they're on the left, regardless, mm -hmm. and to have the dialogue. And I and I go, man, that, that's commendable. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's commendable and that's respectable to have the... Because to your point, you don't really see that on the left, you know? I had a, uh, I had a Zoom call with a... I won't say him, but there's a publishing company, a well-known kind of big-time publishing company, and uh, uh, we were pitching them the book. And um, I was telling them about, you know, who I am, what I do... And I got to the part where I said I stood in the bubble. Mm -hmm. And they were like, huh? They're like, you did what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I decided to stand in the bubble, you know, for my faith. Yeah. yeah. And it was that was it. Really? Like, no. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like there's a sh I feel like there's a shift at that on that now. Yeah. Yeah, because I think, well, obviously because of the whole Black Lives Matter organization yeah. drama, but I feel like even like I'm talking to a couple of publishers this week, you nice. know, and one of them is from the one of the big five publishing houses. Oh, and nice. so like I am not. Uh, Congrats on it. Thank you. I'm. I'm not like a, a clean cut. Like you right. know what I mean. Like right. I've got some pretty hot takes that have went viral. Yeah. Um. So I think I think they're shifting on that because I think a lot of times these publishing houses, these publishing houses, these um labels, they're like, can you can you get eyeballs? Right, exactly. That's it. You know what I mean? They're, they're more capitalistic before right. they're ideal right. ideological about right. something. You know. Um. Yeah. So so I think that's a. That's interesting. So they just flat out just shut you. Yeah, was, it, was it like right after the bubble thing? Because it probably was a little more yeah, polarizing. It, 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 uh, not, not right after. A, a little bit after, but it was, you know, two black ladies. Okay. And so we, as we were pitching big, I even felt like the, oh, shoot, we're going to yeah. get to that point. Yeah. And then it was just like, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's kind of crazy, man. I mean, yeah, that's that's wild. So, 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 so going with Daily Wire was just kind of like they were someone you built the relationships with. But you were open to going with other publishers. Yeah, I was definitely open to going with other publishers. They it looked very um like you guys built it together. Like yes. when I saw it, it was like, oh, this is this is brilliant. Like yeah. they went and sought you out and had you write a book. That's how I perceived it. Mm. But you had the book idea anyway, and you just you just shopped right, it. Right. Okay. I shopped it and they they supported it. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like when we had our meetings with the folks, like they they were one hundred percent about behind it and one hundred percent about keeping the vision mm -hmm. to where it was like, you know, you have some publishers that's like, okay, we need to tweak this. We need to tweak that. We need to edit it. This mm -hmm. might be too much Jesus mm -hmm. in here. Mm -hmm. They weren't like that. They were mm -hmm. like, we want you to stay true to your story mm -hmm. and, um, and be able to share it. That's so dope. I think when you said stay true to your story, what I think is one of the beautiful parts is, you know, from clarity leads to confidence. And when people have clarity on what it is that you're about, then they could be more confident mm -hmm. what you're about. And so I think you even having long form conversations like this and sharing your heart, I think leads to like, oh no, 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 I can't just dismiss this dude as like some, you know, NBA version of Candace Owens. Right. You know what I mean? Like, cause that's, <laughs> I've heard I've heard that a few times. Because people would say that, but then when you listen to you, like that's not what you're on at all. In my opinion, like I know you and Candace are friendly and there's some overlap, but mm -hmm. like I think there's there's more nuance in what you're saying. You know what I mean? A, a thousand percent. And I think that's that's a part of what is wrong with the country yep. that we can't get a lot of things done because it is just about polarization. Yep. yep. You yep. know, as soon as you say hot button words, yep. you know, there is no room for, and then being able to sit down and talk, to, it's like, it's so easy to attack a, a, a title. It's easy yes. to attack, you know, the buzzwords, woke, yep. uh, racist, mm -hmm. trans, well, all this. Mm -hmm. there's like, it's easy to attack those, but it's like when you actually can sit down with somebody, you see their humanity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even if you disagree with them, mm -hmm. you can, you, you can talk about it in yep. that way, but just, over over tw Twitter fingers. Yeah. Is, is I I had a friend of mine, bro, good good friend of mine, and he. So when Roe v. Wade got overturned, mm -hmm. I had a, I had to put out a video, and my video was basically like, y'all need to stop acting like the sky is falling. Okay, like this is a big deal, but like stop acting like you not being able to go and delete babies is somehow you know what I mean, like destroying your your rights. And 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 I had this bit that uh where i said something like it's ironic that the same people who can't define what a man or woman is also can't explain when a baby what a baby is and when a baby begins right and i had this bit and and i and uh apparently it got clipped and put on twitter and uh, when people were searching pro-life that was one of the <laughs> first things <laughs> unbeknownst to me i didn't yeah, know yeah, this yeah, like yeah. i know the video did all right, right. And, I, and i know the instagram reel did all right, but i didn't know that went crazy on twitter so one of my close friends sits down with me and he goes um hey man like you on this whole like a uh, you know deleting babies is this murder thing and like you just come off very like fringe right and I was mm. like fringe right like what do you like I'm not on no like I'm personally not on no MAGA stuff like I'm right. a conservative but right. I'm not out here with like oh my Kanye you know I love Hitler vibes like right, what are you on. talking about you know and we had to keep like unpacking it and unpacking it and talking about it. and then I you know what I did I finally 
showed him what I do on YouTube mm -hmm. in the sense of like, there's a, a couple other creators that shouted me out, like big create, like Abba and Preach. I don't know if you know who they yeah, are, yeah. but they shouted me out yeah. in a video as like the, no, Ruslan is the Christian, but he's the cool, like he gets it. Like he's yeah. not, he don't compromise, but he's also going. And so it took my friend getting clarity from another creator to like actually get what I was doing mm -hmm. and that I wasn't this like fringe, right, radical activist, anti, you know what I mean, guy? Yeah. And so, and so like, it's, it's interesting that sometimes people would dismiss you without ever hearing you. Right. Cause and it's they easy gotta, to put you there. It's easy just to dismiss somebody yeah. as like, oh, he's this woman hating, right. trans, you know, like to your, to your point, but it's like, no, no, you actually got to sit and engage in conversation in long form to actually get somebody's heart. And I think too, a lot of times there is just no respect for people's beliefs in the sense of like, take it, take it with the, uh, with that conversation. It's like, you know, if you believe that this is murder mm -hmm. or something like that, it's, there's no, there's no desire to figure out where that comes from mm -hmm. in the sense of like, when I hear that you're Christian, you know, people label Christians as this, that, and the mm -hmm. third, but when you actually look into the faith and yep. what, what does that mean? It means that every single life is created by God. Right. Every single life has a purpose. Right. Oh, that that that's what you believe, mm -hmm. and that's why you believe that, that. Right? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, as as we unpack that, about, okay, I can understand your strong aversion to this, you know, this situation, this topic, because of what it is that you believe and hold dear in your heart. Yep. yep. And even in that situation, all that really did that that just took it away from federal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That made it that that made it you know on the states, but it was it was such a yeah a they were they were they were losing it a hot topic. They were sure. losing it. Yeah, but and I say all that to say that. Through much conversation, we got to a better place. Me and my buddy got mm -hmm. to a much better place on that. And now he's like, oh, I get it. I, I understand what you do. It's not what I thought it was. This is what you do. You know what I mean? But, mm -hmm. it, but it required effort. It required two people coming together, having conversations, and discussing it to land at where they're at. You know, I had, a, I had a thought yesterday about that specific you know, conversation. And I was thinking to myself, what would happen if all of the all of the right-wing folks that people, you know, say this, that, and that came out and were like, you know what? Yes, do it. Mm. Like, abortion mm -hmm. is great. Do mm -hmm. it. Like, mm -hmm. we want as little of you as possible. Mm. Would that create a comp an automatic like? Oh shoot! No, we want you know now now, mm. now we you know like just kind of playing from the sides perspective. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. one side is for something, the other side hates it. Right. If one side hates it, then the right. other side is for it. Right. If like, what what that would look like in like the the landscape of like Twitter or yeah, yeah, the yeah. way the world works. Yeah. If one side was just like, you know what, yeah, go for it. Yeah. And then seeing how the other side would react. Yeah. Well, I mean, from a macro level, like birth rates are down, mm -hmm. you know, and the only people really out here having kids is like pra practicing <laughs> Christians and practicing yeah. Muslims. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like fast forward 50 years, like what does the country look like? You, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's going, uh, you on this like, I don't want to have kids because of climate and this and that. And I'm not saying the climate is not a real thing. Like there's, you know, there's some things happening there, but like mm -hmm. you don't want to have kids because of climate. You do, you know, uh, you got the, the whole transformers issues with, with kids, uh, you know, puberty blockers, all that kind of stuff. Like you fast forward, you play this out 50 years from now. Uh, there's going to be a lot of folks that, that aren't here. That might be how we take over. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Over. Yeah. And so I think, I think, I think, uh, I don't think people are counting the cost of mm -hmm. like there's a there's a cost to this ideology. Right. You know, there's a cost to and it takes um, time to play out. And it takes time to play out. And it takes generations. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a cost to declining birth rates. Yeah. There's a there's a cost to all these things that you fast forward this to the logical conclusion and, and the world looks very different for the I think Christians freak out because all the stuff that's happening and we're like, Jesus is coming back Thursday. Right. You know, and I'm like, he might, he might come back Thursday, but he might not come back for five hundred years. I, I I think we haven't even seen you know, when, when they talk about the end times mm -hmm. and what we'll see, I think we haven't even caught the tip of the iceberg of what this world will get to. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, word, man. Well, listen, I, I'm excited for this launch. I think it's going to be super dope. And hopefully people will support it and get 100% behind what you're doing. And if there's anything I can do to yeah, help I'm, you Yeah, I'm going to get you merch. No, no worries. Yeah, I'll, I'll but I mean, like, even connecting you with other people, okay, I think it'll be dope. Um, one of the things I really appreciate about you, bro, is you've been a longtime supporter of Christian YouTube. Like, yeah. like, like John McRae, yes, like, that's the homie. Yes. You know, you reached out to me, and, like, I was like, oh, snap, this dude knows who I am. Like, this is super cool, you know? So I've seen you, like, consistently, like, support a lot of people, a lot of Christian hip-hop. You know what are, I mean? Y'all are needed. Yeah. Y'all are needed. There's so many voices. Um, and even something that Christians would talk about is like, okay, like don't touch that, don't go on that platform, stuff mm -hmm. like that. But it's like, 
how would they hear? Right. If if there's not a Christian perspective that's present on today's cultural issues, right. then you know we won't influence anybody. It'll just be our own kind of ecosystem. And so guys like John, guys like you, um, are needed. Yeah. You who else? Who else are some of the other Christian creators you watch? <sighs> Shoot, even hold on. He gonna pull up the 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 YouTube. <laughs> pull up my sister. Yeah, I was dope. I saw you on John's channel uh, a couple years ago, and I was like, oh, that's so dope. I remember you did an interview with him on uh, right after I think the bubble incident happened, and uh, I was like, man, that's that's super fire. What, what's too. what's the guy's name? Um, Par. Alan Parr. A- a- That's Alan the homie. Parr is yep. another one. Yep. Um, even um, Alan. Uh, Alan was just here Thursday. We oh, had lunch. He might be a little more controversial, but the guy. Um, uh, what's the guy? The guy. He's he's a rapper too. There's um, a lot of rappers out of, out of Chicago. I Marcus. Think. Marcus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marcus Rogers. Um, I think I think that's I think that's about it. I think I think yeah. I think you're, you're, the, you're are you the, mainly probably the one into, that I see the most. Are you mainly into like apologetic stuff or like Bible study stuff? Uh, I say prop, prop, I say more apologetics okay. and culture. Okay, I got it. I want you to check out my dude, uh, God Logic Apologetics. Ah, uh, he's heat, bro. He's a dude. Um, he's out of the IE, and he just primarily debates. Okay, but and so he'll go down to Balboa Park and debate like the leading Muslim dudes. Oh yeah, and the, the what the uh Israelites and the Israelites. Yeah, guys. he's debated them before. Yeah. Um they, no, they, they've out. been doing a lot of um uh Trinitarian versus Unitarian debates. Nice. But he's bro, he's he's really good. He's younger good he's younger dude's probably your age. Um he's really really really, really good. Yeah I'll show you his stuff sure. when we get off here. God logic I've been really into his stuff and then I'm I'm a big uh, Mike Winger guy. Like I like Mike yes. Winger stuff yep. a lot. Um, obviously Frank Turek yeah. I think is amazing. Yep. Um, there's a lot of really good. Uh, this it's, it's crazy how much good stuff there is. And, right and now. that does, does that Sean guy make videos? I believe. Yeah, Doctor yeah. Sean McDonald yeah. makes videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he's I'm, he's 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 awesome. I'm trying to do I've seen him um, as well. Have him on the pod because um, again, his dad's book is how I came to faith. Wow, you know so. that'd be a great one. Yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna go over to our Patreon exclusive section of this interview. Some stuff we could talk, we can't talk about on YouTube specifically. The, you know, the the bang bang. <laughs> you know, Jonathan didn't get it. I got it. We're gonna unpack it all right now. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, if you want to see the extended version of this podcast, completely unedited, consider partnering with us in our online community for as little as five dollars a month. In exchange, you get access to these podcasts. As we stream them live before anyone else gets to see them, you get access to the replay of our daily after party streams, access to our private Discord server, access to discount codes, and so much more. So help us continue contextualizing the gospel through media, podcasting, and YouTube, and partner with us for as little as $5 a month. Also, be sure to follow us on the Spotify podcast app, on Facebook, and on Instagram. We're constantly posting content there that I think you'll find extremely valuable. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.